You've undoubtedly heard of Pop-Tarts, the ready-to-eat toaster pastry that has become a cultural icon and a top-selling product for food giant Kellogg Company. But what about Danish Go-Rounds, the Pop-Tarts product that Kellogg's introduced in 1968 for adults? Hi everyone and welcome to The Vintage Company. I'm Julie and I'm a business historian. And this is a new series I'm calling The Product Graveyard, where I take a look at the products and brands that have been discontinued and why. And today I'm talking about Kellogg's Danish Go Rounds, Pop-Tart's forgotten sibling. Pop-Tarts were introduced in 1964 and were an instant success. Within months, Kellogg's had run out. The company was quick to capitalize on the popularity of Pop-Tarts by adding new flavors like Concord Grape and Brown Sugar Cinnamon. And in 1967, Frosted Pop-Tarts appeared with a special icing that wouldn't melt in the toaster. On the heels of Pop-Tarts' success, Kellogg's introduced another toaster pastry, Danish Go Rounds. While Pop-Tarts was primarily marketed for kids, Danish Go Rounds was described as a toaster pastry all grown up. Danish Go Rounds were spiral-shaped pastries with a jam filling. They were topped with sugar and a colorful no-melt icing. Much like Pop-Tarts, Danish Go Rounds could be eaten straight from the package or lightly heated in the toaster. Early ads claimed Danish Go Rounds could have happened in Copenhagen and were like having a 24-hour bakery right at home. Kellogg's described Danish Go Rounds as similar to a Danish sweet roll or a Danish pastry, the Americanized version of Vienna bread, laminated puff pastries sometimes made of fruit, jam, nuts, or cream. Danish pastries, or just Danishes, had been steadily gaining popularity in the United States and could be found in bakeries, coffee shops, the frozen food aisle, and even on the McDonald's breakfast menu when it first became available nationwide in 1976. In reality, Danish Go Rounds were less like a Danish and more like, well, a Pop-Tart. In fact, according to Kellogg's, the two products were almost identical. But while Pop-Tarts had jam sealed between two rectangular pieces of pastry crust, Danish Go Rounds were made by filling extruded pastry dough with jam. The dough was then coiled into an oval shape, kind of like a paperclip. This shape helped keep Danish Go Rounds reasonably sized after baking about 4 inches by 2 and a half inches by 3 fourths inch. And while Pop-Tarts were marketed as a convenient breakfast for busy families on the go, Danish Go Rounds took a more relaxed approach. According to ads, Danish Go Rounds were a sophisticated ready-to-serve pastry made for breakfast, snacks, parties, and coffee clutches or coffee clutches, an informal social gathering where coffee is served. Kellogg's even offered to give 50 cents to customers who tried Danish Go Rounds on their coffee break. Kellogg's initial emphasis on Danish Go Rounds as an ideal pairing for coffee and parties was meant to appeal to adult consumers. But soon, the company expanded its target audience to include kids. In fact, a commercial for Danish Go Rounds that aired during children's television programming was among the Kellogg's products condemned by the Action for Children's Television, or ACT. Testifying before the U.S. Congress, ACT labeled Danish Go Rounds commercials and other children's advertising as misleading and unfair. ACT wanted commercials banned from children's television. Fear of government action led to voluntary changes by the National Association of Broadcasters, the industry trade group that represents radio and television broadcasters. The National Association of Broadcasters enacted a television code, which included guidelines for children's advertising. You may be familiar with one change the code made. They required commercials for sugary cereal, show a glass of orange juice, and say, part of a balanced diet or part of a balanced breakfast. Now, at first, sales of Danish Go Rounds seemed promising. In 1968, Kellogg's noted that product acceptance in test markets was at a most satisfactory level, and Danish Go Rounds were placed into national distribution the following year. Danish Go Rounds even inspired a competing toaster pastry from General Foods called Danka. But by the mid-1970s, Danish Go Rounds had begun disappearing from store shelves. And in 1977, Kellogg's had replaced Danish Go Rounds with a new but similar toaster pastry, Danish Rings. Danish Rings were fruit-filled toaster pastries that closely resembled Danish Go Rounds, even using the same bakery fresh messaging. The biggest difference was how they were made. Rather than making the oval shape by coiling extruded pastry dough, Danish Rings were simply stamped into an oval shape. 
but much like Danish go-rounds, Danish rings never took off and were discontinued in 1980. Meanwhile, Pop-Tarts had grown into a massive brand, controlling approximately two-thirds of the market. So why were Pop-Tarts such a success, but Danish go-rounds and Danish rings were not? Well, for Danish go-rounds, it all boiled down to shipping. According to Kellogg's, Danish go-rounds crumbled easily and frequently broke in transit. Danish rings fixed Danish go-rounds structural issues by stamping the pastry dough into an oval shape rather than coiling extruded dough. But Danish rings struggled to compete with its older and better established sibling. By the late 1970s, Pop-Tarts was already well ingrained in American culture. Another toaster pastry brand, even one from the same company, may have had a hard time gaining traction. It's telling that Kellogg's next, quote, Toaster Danish was marketed under the Pop-Tarts brand. Pop-Tarts pastry swirls were introduced in the late 1990s, and according to a Kellogg spokesperson, they were a successor to Danish go-rounds. Pastry swirls managed to survive until at least 2004 before they too were discontinued. All of Kellogg's attempts at a Danish toaster pastry were considered unsuccessful. Ultimately, their failure may have had less to do with the toaster pastries themselves than who Kellogg's wanted to buy them. When Kellogg's was first testing Pop-Tarts in the 1960s, adult focus groups hated them. It wasn't until plant manager Bill Post brought Pop-Tarts home to his kids, who loved them and wanted more, that Kellogg's recognized that the target market for Pop-Tarts was America's youth. But Kellogg's wasn't ready to give up on the concept of Pop-Tarts for adults. Each rendition of Kellogg's Danish toaster pastries was an attempt to differentiate them from Pop-Tarts and appeal to adult consumers. Danish go-rounds were described as a sophisticated pastry that could be eaten with coffee or served at parties. Danish rings were advertised as the bakery fresh pastry with the adult taste in mind. Pastry swirls were marketed as like no Pop-Tarts you've ever seen and judged best tasting by professional chefs. But these adult-oriented toaster pastries never really caught on. It seems that most adult consumers in the 1960s and 1970s were simply not interested in Pop-Tarts, whether they were marketed as a bakery-fresh Danish pastry or not. As of the making of this video, Kellogg's does not have a Danish toaster pastry product. This could be a reflection of the evolving market for Pop-Tarts. Since its introduction, multiple generations of children who ate Pop-Tarts have grown up. And by the early 2000s, 40% of Pop-Tarts were consumed by adults. A Kellogg spokesperson noted that Pop-Tarts were a unique part of our culture as they are a favorite treat kids and parents have in common. Today, Kellogg's may not need to have a Pop-Tart that appeals specifically to adults because there are adult consumers who still buy the same Pop-Tart flavors they loved as kids. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look back at Kellogg's attempts to replicate Pop-Tart success. If you like this video and would like to hear me talk about other examples of defunct products and brands, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel below. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.